How's it going, you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs, and today I want to show you how to install these ultra-thin LED recess lights. In terms of bang for the buck, it's hard to beat this upgrade to your home. Today, I'll be working with a living room space that has no ceiling lights. It does have a light switch on the wall that controls one outlet that you can plug a lamp into for light. But we're going to use that light switch to control eight LED lights that we're going to install in the room. These lights I got off Amazon for about $10 per unit. And what you get is you get the LED driver and then also the light lens and trim piece. The cool thing about these, one, $10 is a great value. And two, they're selectable running from 2700 Kelvin to 5000. You're gonna be able to match the light color to your other lights or just the space. So for this project, I'm gonna walk you through start to finish. Now remember, wide open ceiling, I don't have any holes cut, so I need to plan it out, where I'm gonna put the locations, how many lights do I need, how to cut the holes, how to rewire that switch and then wire all those LEDs up, and then just the overall finished product. So let's jump into it and start laying things out. So this is the space I'm working with, which is a great living room space, good light in the daytime from those large windows, but nighttime, not so much. This is the layout, which will just be two simple lines of LED recessed lights, and there's the dimensions. So it's 173 inches wide by 228 inches long, and those dimensions represent how I actually measured from each wall surface. If you want more information on how to lay this out, what guidelines to file, you can check this link in the upper right-hand corner, and I'll dive much deeper in how to actually use PowerPoint to come up with your LED layout design. Now, once you have your dimensions, I take small pieces of painter tape, drywall square, just the 48 inch side of that, and then I place small pieces of tape about every two feet or so for those two rows of LED recess lights that I'll be putting into the space. Once you have the pieces of tape down, then I take a continuous piece of painter's tape and I hover that 48 inch mark. It doesn't have to be perfect because once, those, once the tape is down, then I'm going to use my laser measuring tool and then just measure from those surfaces matching up to the dimensions I showed you earlier. So I'll get each one of those lined up and then I'll mark that for the center point of the holes that I'll need to cut for each of the recess lights. Now you want to take your time and this is where you do want to be accurate. If you're not putting your lines straight, you're going to see that later on. Then taking a 3 16 inch drill bit, I'm going to drill those center points out for all eight of the locations. Then take a marking flag and roll that tightly, pass it through the hole, and then up into the attic space. What I want to do is see where each location is, independent on how much insulation I have. Then once I have all those flags in the attic, and start clearing out the insulation so it's not falling while I'm drilling out all of my holes. Remember, wear a respirator, a respirator when you're up in your attic because there will be a lot of particles floating around while you're clearing this out. Now you're ready to start drilling or cutting those holes for each of the recess lights, like the ones you see behind me. What did I use? So I used this purpose-built recess light hole saw. It's made for drywall. It's not a traditional hole saw, which you can also use in wood. It has carbide teeth that are spaced out, which is really good at eating away at drywall. But one thing to consider is if you do have a ceiling joist running through the middle of your hole, this is something you do not have to consider for your layout if you're using the ultra thin LED recess lights because they can fit into the hole and secure flush to your ceiling independent on whether or not there's a ceiling joist running through the middle of that hole. If you're not careful, when you finish the cut in the hole that has the ceiling joist going through, these teeth will grab and then that's gonna bind your drill and possibly damage your ceiling. So just be careful if you do have a ceiling joist running through the hole, just take your time at the end of that cut. Also, it's good to just know what you're getting into. So this is my ceiling. If you just have half inch drywall, that's awesome. It's gonna be pretty easy to cut out, but this is actually a ceiling with some plaster. So I have a half inch drywall and then quarter inches of plaster. Now, if you look closely at this, at this hole, Two out of my eight holes actually had the steel mesh running underneath a ceiling joist. 
So I had to do quite a bit more work to get those holes out because the hole saw was just not gonna eat through that wire mesh without making a huge mess and damaging the ceiling quite a bit. So if you guys wanna dive deeper and just spend more time because you're not super comfortable with cutting these holes, I have a whole nother video right here that you can dive into. It's gonna show you when things go right. It's gonna show you that wire mesh and how did I get those holes out with an oscillating tool and what kind of blade I use. And also it shows you for about three bucks how to make a custom drywall dust and debris catch, which is gonna help just keep your space cleaner and not make a mess of your room with drywall all over the place. So now let's jump into the electrical portion of this project, which will start to really pull everything together. So let me walk you through now how I'm going to reconfigure the electrical to fit the LED recessed lights that we're installing. And I will note, I apologize for the audio, I know there's quite an echo, but hopefully the content's still valuable for your project. So the way it's set up in this room, I have this receptacle providing power, goes up into the attic, and then down into just two different switches. One switch goes to the porch light, and then one switch controls a receptacle that's right below the electrical box. How I'm going to reconfigure it is I'll be taking the power coming in, the Romex coming in, and I'll be installing a simple junction box up in the attic. I'll be coming in with the existing power and then jumping out to 14.3 Romex, which is gonna give me the additional wire needed for the lights. Okay, so 14-3 is going to come down here. It's going to combine the black wire, which is going to be powering the porch light, powering the receptacle now all the time, so it's no longer switched, and then also provide the power we need for the switch to go up to our lights. Then the red wire is that switchable power that will go to the LED lights and turn them on. Pretty simple. Then between each of the lights is just a 14-2. No need for the extra wire, right? Because we're just daisy chaining those together. So that's the setup. Now I'm gonna to try to pull the new 14-3 from this box up into the attic. That's basically the trickiest part of this, is getting that new 14-3 up into the attic. Now if you're a pro, you've done this many times, one, let me know your feedback, what tricks do you use, what am I doing wrong. But if you are a DIYer, don't do this very often. This can be a little tricky, especially if the wire is attached to the studs here so it makes it so you can't pull it. Hopefully that's not the case because I really don't want to have to tear in this drywall and it would only do that as a last resort. I'll remove these old switches so I can access the old wiring that I'm gonna to need to pull the new 14.3 up in the attic. Then I'll strip the 14.3, all four wires in a staggered approach, connecting up the longest strand to the old existing neutral wire. Then I'll twist the bundle as tight as possible, making sure no wires are sticking out and it's as smooth as you can get it. Then once you have that, I'll take electrical tape and then I'll wrap the exposed copper Again, you wanna make sure that just nothing's sticking out that can catch, which will help you as you pull the new wire in the attic. Once you have that, fun part. Jump up in the attic. Hopefully you have a little more headroom than I do because this is an outside wall. And then start working it, pulling the new 14.3 up into the space. If you can get that, that's a big step in the overall process. And there it is. Now, unfortunately, I have a little drywall repair in my future because I did have to cut a hole to get that 14.3 up and into the attic. There's the 14.2, which will go to my first LED light. But first, I need to put together the junction box. So this is up in the attic, and that's the main power. It's the old wire that was going down to the electrical box with the switch for the porch and the receptacle before. So that's cut short in the attic and it's going into this junction box with on the other side is the 14.3 Romex that we just ran down to the electric box. And here's the 14.2 that will go to the LED lights starting with the first hole. So I tighten down all those cable connectors. And just a tip guys, I'm trying to include all the parts to this project 
depending on your experience level, you might want to go slower or faster. So the little gear icon in the lower right hand corner, you can slow down the video or you can speed up the video to match your experience level. So I'll just strip off all these wires and then I'll be connecting up the grounds together and then all the neutrals together. And then I'll, I'll be taking the black hot side and going to the black hot in the 14.3. And then the red from the 14.3 goes to the black in the 14.2 because that's switched power and that's gonna turn on LED lights. Back down at the electrical box with the two switches, I have the 14.3 coming in, which I'll strip all those wires to. And then I need to connect, just connect up all the grounds together. And there I'm going to twist these together and then actually ground it because this box was grounded. I ground it to a screw that is the, on the lower right hand corner tightening clamp. Then I'll bring together all the neutrals. And then the blacks, which will power the outlet or receptacle all the time and then two pigtails coming out for the two switches. So the switch I'm doing right now will actually be for the LED recess lights and that's why the red goes in the top of that and then the other black goes to the porch light. That's basically just replacing the old switch the way it was. I'll tighten these down. Now long term I do want to put a dimmer switch on but just gonna put these cheap switches in place to test everything out. And now it's time to push through all eight of those LED lights. All right, so I got a couple of these wired up and I just want to touch on the wiring of each of these driver units. So overall, very simple. They'll have inside of them ground, hot, and neutral. And they have actually push pin instead of wire nuts. So they'll actually just be push pins. I don't like push pins usually on switches and receptacles, but at least with these, you can, uh, they're transparent. So you can see through and make sure that your copper is making good connection and that you have a solid connection between all the wires. Now I'm daisy chaining most of these except for my last one over there. So I will need two different cable connectors. These are 3 eighths of an inch, and those do not come with kit. So down in the description, you'll see links to the LED lights. You'll see links to these 3 eighths of an inch cable connectors and anything else you need for this job. But what you do, I'll show you. All you have to do is just put a flathead screwdriver in there, twist, and the, the cover pops right off. So for all of these, except for the last one, I need to do two of those. Then you just take the nut off, Pop it in. And then you just put that on the inside. Make sure you can see it. And then just tighten that right out. What this is going to do is that it tightens down on the Romax and provides strain relief so you're not like pulling at the wires if somebody pulls on the Romax itself. So you twist that up. You get it to where it starts to snug in, and you can either tap on the inside on the notches on that nut with a flathead screwdriver, or what I do is I just hold that inside, and then I just leverage like that on the outside, and that's how I tighten it up. And I want my screws to be heads to be facing the same direction, so they're just easy to tighten up. So Romex goes in. That one has one line coming in, I'm going to put another line out. The nice thing is I'm able to do all this wiring down in the space and not have to live up in the attic for an hour or more getting all these wired up. So I can kind of fish my Romex up through a hole to the other one, connect that up, and then actually put the LED light in its place, secure it, and then go into the next one and then just keep daisy chaining along that way. Other thing to note, make sure you have, as I said, make sure you have your correct setting before you put it up in the ceiling. So I am setting to 3000, so I want to make sure all those are set to 3000 when I'm putting them in the ceiling. Now I have two connected up. I don't want to get too far without testing the circuit. 
So I have my switches in place, which you saw. I have flipped the power on. And it looks like we are good to go. Now test everything else out in your circuit as well. So make sure, for me, I have a porch light, make sure the porch light's coming on, make sure your receptacles are powered, anything else in that circuit, make sure that it is the way you planned it to be. But other than that, you should be good, and I'm gonna do the other six lights now. Huge difference to this space. I mean, this is a living room. It's the main entrance, the first thing you see, and we are renovating and reselling this house. So in terms of first impressions, this is a big deal. It really lights up the space. And now throwing a dimmer switch, you'll be able to adjust that to bring lights down or give all the light that you'd ever want. You can look in the description to see the exact LED lights we used and the cable connectors, the other parts and tools that we use for your reference if you're going to do a project similar to this. Also, let me know what you think and let me know if you have any questions, especially on the electrical side. All of our scenarios are going to be different. Also, you might not have attic access. That's going to make this a whole different project. But investment-wise, this is only about $200 in cost. So it, you will get the return if you're doing it yourself from a DIY perspective. I think it's a no-brainer. Before you take off, don't forget if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, do that as we have multiple videos coming out per week to help you with your repairs and improvements around the house. And we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.